Kurt and Claymore say y'all was y'all was in a place. <laughs> <laughs> he he came on my show yeah. and he told his story and he said y'all went to do a show and something happened with the money. Something happened funny with the money. So ended up a promoter put both of us on the same show. Okay, I was the host. So automatically we we connected just like that. We ended up uh, chilling now. He had his camera. Um, he started giving me a shout out on his stuff and stuff That's like good. that. We uh, we were supposed to do the show at a certain time. We didn't do the show till probably two two hours later because the prom- promoter didn't have the money. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One on One. Yeah, we gonna talk. Is that the craziest thing a fan ever done for y'all? A fan? Yeah. What's the craziest thing a fan ever done? Uh, the craziest thing? Or the most mind blowing thing? For I you, mean, for this, you. I, it was this one lady. That she was just kind caught of, you off guard. No, nah, she said that she gave me the money to start the eighty five South show. She introduced me to what? Steve Harvey and all. You don't of this. know. Him? Never met this lady <laughs> a day in my life. She told the police this officer to at the face? show that we had five kids and. Huh? I told her to come up there and oh man, crazy stalker type shit. Nothing funny or entertaining like uh, real life go to court restraining all the time. Oh, shit. it got serious she here. Black? Yes. She black. Oh, when she... the police was like, be. I was just in the dressing room and he came in and he was like, bro, how many kids you got? <laughs> I was like, one? He was like, why did they say y'all got five kids? I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that lady is. And he was like, man, you can't be back here. You got to leave. They been laid out in the floor screaming and howling. They had to take her. No. Man, it was crazy, yeah. man. Crazy. People would sit back and watch stuff like this and just put together and a whole scenario it. and believe it. No, it, I believe it because we had somebody call us big fan in it. Just, oh, where is Miss Jamaica? I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Exactly. Uh, and, they, and it started getting to where, and I know it was an autistic guy, and it got weird. I just had to hang up and block him. I had to block him. He kept calling like a, a lot of times. Damn, man, you never know. So you never but know what that is. crazy when you have to deal with people who got like real life mental health issues, yeah. and then you see it, and you're like, damn, it's sad. It's yeah, sad because yeah, it's yeah. like, They'll do something that'll make you be like, oh, you not. Yeah, you touched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not right. And it's not fair to try to say, hey, I need to retap. Like, you need help. Yeah. Like, you need, people need resources. So that's the sad part about it. Do you ever, um, I mean, I know you've seen all this joke stealing going on. Yeah. Either you stole a joke or stole (laughs) a joke got stole from you. Right. You know, like, is this a real thing? Because everybody talking about it. Cats say this guy stole his joke. Uh, uh, They say uh, he stole uh, J.B. Smooth's joke. Like, you niggas be stealing each other jokes in here. What you mean, you niggas? You're you a comedian, you nigga. This is the thing about it. You You're a comedian. You can't come up to me and ask me about what some other motherfuckers <laughs> doing. I ain't stole shit. Yeah, I, look at my jokes. It, I look at my jokes every day on Instagram. Do you know oh, why? Oh, so somebody take your jokes. You, you remember the my tour was called at the end of the day. Yeah. Right, because I do this joke at the end of the day, the day over with. Now it's a whole goddamn meme. I'm looking at my friends post. You know this is the name of my... T- Why are you laughing at somebody who's stealing my jokes? <laughs> I see so... Anytime you see them little memes with the white background and the black words, that's yeah. probably some shit I said at wow. one of my shows. So... I got to figure out how I can get paid how off do this you, shit. That's what I'm saying. How do you... How do you... It's how just can the world you be that cool? we live in. Somebody going to take this interview and chop it up and upload it on their YouTube Some page. people do it. They do it. But that's why I got this this black thing behind you. It don't you. matter. They don't like, have to put their watermark all over this shit. <laughs> People steal content. People steal everything. That's what happens. But sometimes that shit, motherfucker can be way to fucking Detroit. Motherfucker can be in Atlanta. It's not that they doing the exact same shit. It's just creatively sometimes shit happens. I agree with sometimes that. Sometimes niggas will flat out do your shit and don't <laughs> give a fuck. I do it better than you. I sound better when I say it. I use better words. I look better. My clothes look better. The hoes like me more. Sometimes it's them. I told you, it's a lot of them niggas. They hate each other. Uh, uh, Kurt and Claymore say y'all was y'all was in a place. <laughs> he he came on my show. Yeah. And he told his story. And he said y'all went to do a show. And something happened with the money. Something happened funny with the money. So ended up a promoter put both of us on the same show. Okay. I was the host. So automatically we we connected just like that. We ended up uh chilling out. He had his camera. Um he started giving me a shout out on his stuff and That's stuff like good. that. We uh 
we were supposed to do the show at a certain time. We didn't do the show till probably two two hours later because the prom- promoter didn't have the money. He didn't have our money. So was we, you upset? We went, nah, I wasn't upset. We you went to uh, we went to you supposed to keep the chair down or something. Nah, we was outside. We was actually waiting for him to come. He came. You like man, I'm waiting on the dude to come in and get the money. Then Carlos looking at me like nigga, this, this sound like some nigga shit, right? <laughs> Did you <laughs> ask you? Ask you, but no, he said it's not like, he, he looking at me. He like, well, nigga, we not doing the show until we get the money. So he's like, y'all going up there and well, do I wish it. Start, I been there. start the show and I'm gonna pay y'all. I'm like, nigga, See, we not I doing can't that. Be no, nothing like that. I'm gonna be laughing. I ain't gonna then nigga gonna look at me. I supposed to be host. Nigga gonna you look at me. Said. Then nigga gonna say, I give you some gas money. Uh-uh. Gas money. Oh no, I'm not finna get up there. You finna pay me. Uh yeah. This nigga was a promoter. The promoter nigga ain't had no juice. Sometimes a lot of these promoter niggas, they just, they build their reputation based off the the artist. You get what I'm saying? Okay. It's like, if you a good promoter, you can bring anybody to your spot. You can bring the local rapper to your spot and pack it. If you a People, good promoter. Because they can pack it But out. if you just a promoter who booking names or who hot right now, and you know people going to show up, it's going to make you look good. So when we showed up, it wasn't that we wasn't shit. It's that you wasn't shit. You <laughs> live here, and you can't get nobody to come to this shit. He didn't market it right. He don't, yeah. He was one of them lazy promoters, and then we show up the day of to do, you know, thinking that it's all good. He telling us, oh, Tick's doing good. You sold all these tickets and didn't nobody come. <laughs> <laughs> so did. But you, you still performed. Most definitely. And he t- I that, think that's that what he said. on YouTube. Kerwin somewhere. said that th- that's when he gained so much respect for you because you went out there and gave it your all. The whole show. I gave it a whole show. Carlos just it's like, I, I watched this, the show I did with him, I watched this nigga improv for 45 minutes straight. Wow. Just off of the crowd. Mm-hmm. This, and you could tell when somebody improv and this joke. I literally watched him, and that was the show where it was probably about eight people there. Mm. So that probably why the promoter ain't gonna give us our, yeah, he give us. Man, when I say this man was performing like it was a lot of people there, eight people, he and can't. I learned from there. I was like, you know what, man, no matter what, I'm just gonna you no know, have fun like that. He improv the whole show, gave them people they money work. That's what he said. He was like, come like on, six myself. waitresses. I said, who's your favorite uh, comedian? He said, man, I got a lot of respect for Carlos, Carlos. man. Carlos. Man, me and Carlos, we <laughs> waited for <laughs> <for Carlos. laughs> We had the family dollar. And he told that story. And shopped in there. <laughs> let's see now some tickets, man. Yeah, but that was. He said, you treated just, it like it was a packed house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's hard, though. I, Sometimes I, it's more about me than them. Mm. I've been looking for me to be on a TV show or something. Nigga, you had me at that thing. I ain't forgot. I was in there. Remember, we went to the comedy show? Comedy show. And you was like, it, it was filming. They were like, we going to be on TV. I'm like, what shit. show was it? It was in, in, in Atlanta. It was an Atlanta comedy show, right? That was our okay. first show that we saw we, you. That was, was our first Netflix one. thing? No, it wasn't a Netflix thing. It, it may have been it something, may have been something we like that. We was in Atlanta at that Atlanta comedy club. Oh. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, when is it that coming was out? For the Old Spice. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he did mention Spice. something See, like yeah, that. You yeah, you did say that. Yeah, 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 because I was like, damn, man, this here I can't dope. control that. We was just, I was a part of that. Yeah. I was producing part of that <laughs> no. with them. And then once I did turned the footage out? over to them, I, yes, for an online campaign. Okay, because yeah. I know I didn't see it. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, you know how when you're on TikTok and you're scrolling and they be like, oh, it's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's hard, though. That, that, that make money, too. Yeah. that's a, That ad stuff is real. Like I do. I love stuff like that. Like, they, they always do what's called urban marketing. Yeah. So they'll reach out end of the year. It just be like some corporate shit, but then it'd be a nice check. Nice Whether check. you ever see it again or not, I know what I did. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.